Today we're going to have a look at all sections of Enter Sandman by Metallica. I'm going to be doing this as a tutorial, but also I want to show you this quick video where the band is interviewed and they're asked about how they came up with this riff and how they wrote this song. Like, have you ever wondered where riffs like this come from? They become so iconic and I, I'm fascinated by this stuff. Let me know if you are in the comments below. Uh, but don't worry, we've got a full tutorial for all the riffs, the solo, absolutely every part of this song. Uh, but let's have a look at this first. Chapter times are in the description if you uh, are not interested in this part of the video. But I really am. So let's have a look. Literally, our is at three o'clock in the morning, and I played it like this. <laughs> I wish that's the kind of riff that I came up with at three o'clock in the morning. Reminds me of Keith Richards apparently coming up with. Uh, satisfaction, you know. While he was kind of spaced out under a <laughs> under a mixing desk. And Lars and says that was to you, you as original. I, and then he came I, up to me and said, "Repeat the first part three times, and then play the chords afterwards, or four times, whatever it is." <laughs> so I said, "Okay." All right. You hear, you hear the three and one in that? So Lars was the one who suggested the structure of the riff. So even after we have... Oh, so they're tuned down by half a step. I'm in standard tuning. Metal bands often, or any heavy band, really common that they'll tune down by half a step. That's typically just for um, the vocals, so James Hetfield's vocals. What a voice, by the way, James Hetfield. Like, I've never tried to cover Metallica when I've done a gig, and uh, part of that reason is, who can sing like him? He's so fantastic. But yeah, standard tune in. And that was the first thing that Kirk came up with, and it was Lars that said, repeat this, that's twice, three times. How cool is that? So yes. we call the back the, the back one is the tail, the front one is, you know, whatever. Yeah. Three repeats and then a tail. That's so cool. What other songs kind of have three repeats and a tail? The only one I can think of right now is Wolf Mother. Is it Woman? That's it. Couldn't think of it then. That's exactly the same. One, two. Three repeats and a tail. What other risks can you think of that are like that? And try and write your own, I guess. But how cool. So a good opportunity to look at this riff. I'm with a really heavy sound. Here are the amp settings I'm using. I'm just using a GarageBand preset to show you guys that you can get sounds like this using any gear. GarageBand is free on a lot of things. It's free on a lot of your phones that you might have. But the notes, we have zero, zero, seven, six, five. That sixth fret that's the the darkness of this, the tritone. It repeats three times. And then we have this. Obviously, you guys, a lot of you might know this, but um here's how we can do a power chord at the third fret. When we hit the open string, just hit the open single string, and then we hit power chords. We have some palm music. So that ending, three, zero, two, zero, two, three, two, zero, but it's power chords. And the other thing this riff's a great example of is an early one where that first beat, one, of the riff is on the and of four. One, two, three, four, and. gives it this kind of pull forward. I've heard Brian Johnson call that the rock and the roll. That's the roll of the... Yeah, if it's just rock, it's too straight. I don't know. Kind of funny. Uh, let's have a look how they made this into a song. Lars doesn't know how to play guitar, and he will arrange stuff, and he'll just say, hey, can't you do that thing in another key? Something that I wouldn't do, you know, like Sam and for instance. Then change the key... So he's talking about the chorus there. And it is a true thing as a, a guitar player playing in F sharp, unless you're going to utilize the open to two, like, I don't know, Rage Against the Machine, right? 
uh, Jimmy Page's song. Unless you're going to go to that open string, you wouldn't go up a key. But it gives it such a cool lift. It's kind of... There's a few 80s songs that I think do a key change for the chorus, but they tend to be ballads. So doing it in this song is like a rock song. Inspired. It's like... I wouldn't do that. I, I I can't pick that. And then it'll be a challenge. It's like, okay, I can do that. So there's there's a lot of um, pushing of each other, you know. Same with, like, dr drum stuff, too. Exactly, yeah. Like, James hey, Nicole, can't yeah. you do this thing there? And it's like, I would never have thought of that. And, yes, I can try that. Give me a day, and I'll come back, and it'll be worked out. <laughs> Amazing. Any of you guys try to uh, tell a drummer what drum fill you want him to do, and you literally just have to go, do -do -do -do, you know, <laughs> just make noises. And um, I guess that's what he's talking about here. Let's look, have a look at how to play that chorus and then the intro. Uh, and then we've, we've got most of this song. We've got all the riff sections, really. So I'm on a clean sound now, which you would need a channel, channel switching amplifier to be able to do, or pedals, or like I've done, just change the sound in GarageBand. And uh, we play this riff. Little bit of chorus on that sound. I don't think there's nearly enough chorus on that. I'd add a bit more, actually. But while we're here, we have the same, exactly the same notes as that, but adding in, Going to the minor third, uh, this is at the fifth fret, this makes this kind of an E minor chord. At the fifth fret on string four. The same six to five move we did before, finishing with uh, the third finger, seventh fret, the E note, the octave. Obviously super similar to the main riff, but not the same. The same, the heavy riff. Is actually simplified, because I guess they're just giving it space, gives riffs room to breathe a little bit. Uh, and then the chorus moves the, the intro riff, not the main riff, the intro riff. This is when it's heavy, heavy sound, but I've gone clean so you can hear what I'm doing and see what I'm doing. So when it, James there is saying, I'll, I'll have to figure that out, it's because we haven't got open strings anymore, but it's, we've got the octave of the F sharp, minor third again, middle finger on that blue scale note some of you will know about. And we go. Sleep with one eye open, gripping your pillow tight. Slide down from 12. I love these kind of things. And then we have power chords. So it's simplified again for the chorus so we can sing over it and so that the focus, I guess, is on the vocal. Exilite. And then the riff from the intro, and the verses and everything. So that chorus again is an F sharp, second fret power chord, down a string, from the third fret root note to a second fret root note. With one eye open, gripping your pillow tight, exulia, Even clean, it sounds heavy, right? Uh, and then we've got to look at the intro, but let's have a quick look at how these guys made this into a song. You've got a great riff, you've got a few great riffs. How do you put a vocal over it? How do you make it into a song? I don't understand how songwriters come up with a riff. You know, like one of your iconic riffs. You come up with a riff. How do you know what to sing over? And does it all start with the riff? Yes. It definitely starts with the riff. For me as a vocalist, I try to insert where the guitar isn't at times, you know. Then the verse is 
You simplify the riff so the vocal has its place to jump around, you know? Well, it stands out, right? Like in the chorus and in the verses. So the verses, just an E power chord most of the time, palm muted, middle finger and little finger. I'll have a look at how he does it, actually. Then the verse is... So he does it with a little finger, but he actually does palm muting. If you want to move around a little less, but remember to unpalm mute. And that just puts all the focus. Yeah, there's there's a groove happening, but say your prayers, little one, don't get us. And that's again on the and of four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Which just gives it that, it's not a gallop, it's a pull forward. Really cool. So that's the last of the reaction sections. We're just gonna now have a playthrough of all those riff sections in order so that you can see how they fit together. Then we're gonna look at the solo. For the clean intro, if you go to the rhythm pickup, so the neck pickup, that's actually just turned down from there. That's all on the guitar's volume here, but that way you can uh, go to the heavier sound just on one flick there, which is what I'm gonna do now to give you an option. So we have. We have a wah section, which is uh, on the heavier guitar then. We go to that heavier sound. This is sliding up again on the and of four to the seventh fret. So adding in slides, one note of the riff, and still keeping that. Add another note of the riff. And that's the last thing that's added and before it kicks in. Using this, it's all there. Into that pre chorus. Power chords. example. Uh, lots of wah in this. Hopefully that play along was section or was all right for you. Let me know any comments you have in the comments below and I will try and help you out all I can. Now we're on to lead guitar territory. That little little lead break just at the end of that, uh, just before the second verse. Pretty straightforward. Double stops. And then we also have Really Chuck Berry, not particularly metal as a lead line, apart from the sound of the guitar, the actual lead part itself. Very Chuck Berry. Now let's have a look at the main solo. Let me do a bit of a playthrough first of all, so you can get the gist of it. <laughs> Played by Kirk Hammett. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right. Not played perfectly, but it's such such an iconic and fun solo. And it's got so many bits that it's just like it's like a little victory dance and then the ending everyone like iconic absolutely iconic uh, but it starts off with these double stop licks which are you know we think an E minor pentatonic absolutely mainly in shape one actually um, 15th fret and 14th fret Start. So one, two, three, four. It's like the first two bars. Then we have these octave techniques, which we looked at in the recent Foo Fighters videos that I've done. Literally there running down. Like a guitar exercise running down the E minor pentatonic there. You could even... But here it just happens from the third string. Pick, flick off, hammer on. Pick, flick off, hammer on. Pick, flick off, slide. that sort of technique in my lead guitar course, courses at andyguitar.co.uk if you fancy but then we get into kind of a shreddy bit not super shred but and then this part that's probably the toughest bit I actually couldn't really play this on my Les Paul. Kirk's using a Les Paul in his video where he's playing this live and demoing this riff. Couldn't do it on mine, didn't have the axis up the neck and it was really uncomfortable. Um, it's just pretty easy on an SG to be honest. Though. That's why I'm using this guitar. Also, you know, Black Sabbath. So we have a unison bend for this kind of second section of the solo. A little gallop which is the same technique as as uh, Thing Called Love, I believe in the Thing Called Love by The Darkness. It's that same. Uh, so pick, hammer on, flick off, pick, and that's it, just those three in a row. Pick, hammer on, flick off, pick, hammer on, flick off. And then you move this to, the lick changes now. And it's this uh, kind of triad. That's like like a, uh, a D major arpeggio. And it switches. So cool. But that bit, pick as an up pick, flick off, down pick, pick as an up pick, and then you move it. About as quick as I can play it reasonably. And then the second half of the solo goes over the F sharp. That chord, and Kirk kind of pretends he's in B minor for, or B for this. I don't know why, but that's where we are. That's uh, all just double stops. So tabs wise, we should properly do seven, hammer on nine, seven, ten. And then, this is bar 25 on the tab, I'll link in the description below. 10, 8, 7, 9, 7, 8, 7, 9, 7, 9, flick off 9, 6, 7, 7, 9, 7. Just going back to the blues scale. Line. So demoing this part properly, 7, hammer on 9, 7, 10. Mm -hmm. 
And then we get to the... The most fun bit of the solo, I think. It's an iconic ending. It's 16, 14, 16. I call these slash bends, because this happens a lot. I learned this from Guns N' Roses solos. Kind of bending up, a whole tone, little finger on the 17. And then the very last part of the solo is actually quite easy. 21, 17 to zero. All the way down there. Just kind of about five times, about as fast as you can. Uh, yeah, five times. Pick, lick off, lick off to zero. Keep your thumb, this part of your thumb, over all the strings so they stop ringing out and you don't get noise. See? No noise, just... Uh, <laughs> just amp hiss. Let me demo that one more time. Then a bend up of 22. A couple of double picks. And for the very last part. This is that same kind of harmonic minor thing that he was doing, kind of in B minor. is pick 10, flick off to 8, 7, hammer on 9, 9, flick off to 9, 9, flick off to 5, 7, bend down, 5, 7. solo. Let me know how you get on with that in the comments below and any more songs you would want me to dissect like this and react to, let me know and I will see if I can do a future video on them. Bye bye for now.